Morning all. I know I've been absent this week. I've been at Chelsea Flower Show twice. <laughs> and uh, I've already cut one wedding, which was very pretty and lovely and done my kind of regular floristry jobs. And now I'm cutting for two weddings this weekend. One is a DIY job. So they're having 10 mixed buckets to do themselves and the other I'm going to be doing. So join me and I'll show you how I go. First of all, mmm. The best ranunculus I've ever had this year. I think they've loved the cold spring. I think I managed to water, not overwater them, not underwater them, feed them just enough. You can't control everything. You can just do your best. And when an idea comes to fruition, happy days. So I've no doubt that next year's ranunculus will be a total write-off and a complete failure. So I'm really, really enjoying the ones I've had this year. Right, come along and we'll see how we get on over the next couple of days. They're very precious and they're on very, very long stems. That's 200 uh, stems, more flower heads, because obviously some of the stems uh, have two or three flowers on. And this will be the last of the ranunculus this year. I doubt we'll have any more. I will cheerfully dig them up. They have been very giving. And if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please do press the subscribe button and the bell icon, which will tell you when we've got more tips, clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are helpful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club. I did a talk yesterday at Chelsea Barracks and there were a couple of my club members there and they were so kind and told everybody in the audience how useful the club is. So if you're interested in growing flowers, possibly for sale, running small businesses, uh, gardening in a kind of, you know, hardcore way, then the club might be just the place for you. All right, see you along. Here's the patch when I've cut them all. So a patch, a metre wide, about four metres long, will give me 200 plus ranunculus um, in one harvest. I have already taken a couple of hundred off this week. So that's 400 off this week. That's an exaggeration, I'm gonna be honest. I think more like 100 this week. Okay, so a four metre long, metre wide patch of ranunculus has given me 300 stems this week. Right, first sweet pea cut of the year. Oh, I love these ripple sweet peas, aren't they heaven? I love a flake on a sweet pea. And this red one is red ensign, and it's very, very fine. So the weddings are, the two weddings, one, a couple of chaps um, having a lovely day on Saturday in a marquee, which is a DIY do, and the other is a country house wedding, My the kind of stuff I do a lot of, you know, pretty posies, really lovely classic English country flowers. And of course, what I did, and I do this all the time, I hope that's not my dog, is I lose my nerve, oh it's not, Oh, she's growling behind me. No, 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 no. Come here. Take it. Come here. <clears throat> anyway, come here. This is my life, me and my dog. Um, so I, what happens all the time is I lose my nerve. I don't trust the garden. So I ordered up some lovely peonies from my Cornish colleagues to fill up the gaps in case the ranunculus weren't doing it. Total waste of money, because the ranunculus is absolutely doing it. When you're flower farming and floristing, you have to trust your garden. And, as you're cutting, because I'm doing two events, I'm basically playing, playing flower Tetris all day, because I'm having to do mental arithmetic about what I'm using for one wedding, what I'm using for the other wedding, and also keeping an eye on what's looking good, and because, so mostly I cut 50 to a bucket, which works very nicely because it makes it easy to count. But, for example, the sweet peas is the first flush of sweet peas. If I put 50 sweet peas in a bucket, they're just going to fall in and bruise. So they're tucked in the side here, and I've got to remember that I've put them there. Anyway, flower tetris keep going. This gorgeous pink person is Vicaria Hispanica. There you are. 
I've got her in the tunnel. Right, I'm finally outside. So everything I've got so far has come out of the tunnel. I'm now gonna have as much as I can take of this lovely scented Hesperus matronalis because I can then feed it and water it and I'll have more next week. Can you see? I'm sharing it with the orange tip butterfly tucked underneath. The butterflies are beginning to buzz about. I love them. Always park your trolley in the shade, Mrs. Worthington. Always park your trolley in the shade. And while you're out cutting, always watch out for the tooth and claw of wildness eating one another. It's very good. That's why you need a whole food chain. If you kill people off, then what is somebody else going to eat? So it's the next morning and the flower Tetris, flower bucket Tetris has gone well. Uh, here's the wedding I'm going to be prepping behind me. Still a little more detailed cut, but I'm sort of there. And this is the wedding that's being collected. This is a DIY wedding. And I've got a little bit of time. So I'm going to just add a few tiny details to this, uh, which are extras, but it's my pleasure. That's the thing about doing this job is the idea is to do a little extra because you can. The studio has a lovely herby smell when it's really full. Um, mint helps, <laughs> but it's a sort of slightly bitter, but tasty, delicious, scented smell. Well, the light is lovely, isn't it? Anyway, I've added a few more GMs and a little tiny bit of cow parsley. The chances are the client has a great deal of cow parsley of their own, but they may or may not have time, have had time to cut it. Um, and they may have it for other arrangements. So these, there's just a few stems here. I know that the client is planning crowns of foliage to go round the poles of the marquee. So I've cut lots of quite sturdy foliage and I know that that cow parsley I've just cut is very ripe and won't flop. So if they want to just tuck it into the into the into the crowns of foliage on the marquee uh, poles tomorrow, then it'll just be a little fluff of froth there. Anyway, on we go. Right, so they are all ready for collecting. And now, so now I'm going to walk around the garden and just get some detail. I've got the block of flowers that I'm going to use for this wedding. But one of the nice things about being a flower farmer and one of the nice things for customers who buy wedding flowers from flower farmers is that there is an opportunity for really tiny perfection. And, you know, ordinary florists, ordinary florists, all wedding florists who have a garden will do this. They will walk around before they make the bride's bouquet in their garden and just look for detail. Or I have customers who will come just for the detail for their floristry. Oh, here's my customer. Um, so I'm gonna go out and cut, see whether I can find some extra bits and pieces. Right, my client has collected and gone and um, I'm going cutting. And I find I go cutting on a day like today, not because I particularly need any more material, but because I need to sort of settle my mind before I start doing the floristry. <laughs> It's very, very simple. Look, as we're passing, guess what this weekend's job is? Hmm, I think I might be planting out the dahlias. Oh, right. So the sweet peas are not exactly exploding yet, but let's see if I can get another 20, just while I calm my mind. Easily 20. I planted these. Do you remember last year I was talking about the coronation? And so I planted red, white and blue sweet peas. <laughs> And the coronation was two weekends ago, but still, I love it. That's a very, very fine little combination. So I was hoping that um, some of these nigella might have popped during the night and they haven't, but I'm still gonna cut some. Hello. Because I love the texture of the foliage and in the, in the posies, they'll be very, very sweet.
these wallflowers are not the colour scheme at all, but they smell delicious and they will give depth of field in posies which otherwise might disappear rather against white tablecloths. So you won't really see them, they'll just sort of disappear into the posies, but the dark red will be there as an understory and it'll really work against all the pinks and purples, I, I promise you. <laughs> um, and I only need 10, uh, some of them are looking a bit raggedy Ann, it's rather the end of their season, but um, I only need 10, there are only 10 posies and the scent from them will fill the room. And the Phacelia too, much beloved of the bees. Look at this amazing sort of neon lilac colour. Will be very, very good in the posies. So I'm just going to have 10 stems of this. It's all about the detail, the finishing touches. While in some ways the garden is exploding into colour, it is still very much a one of this, a two of that time of year. We're getting there though. I wonder if I've got a couple of roses. Oh, ah, yes, yes, look. Just enough for the bride's bouquet. I've got roses and suddenly honeysuckle. Happy days. The wedding is on Sunday and these pink pops of Shropshire Lads are just popping for it. Perfect. Right, I should think that's enough. We've got Telema Grandiflora, which I love. Physocarpus Diablo, various ranunculus, lots. The pink froth at the back is Vicaria Hispanica. We have Phacelia, Nigella, more ranunculus. The occasional Shropshire Lad Rose, more ranunculus. The first of the sweet peas, altogether about 70 of them. Uh, we have Alcamilla mollis, Persicaria bistorta, cow parsley, obviously, uh, alliums, more ranunculus, <laughs> mint, lovely mint, peonies, lovely peonies, quite blown, we'll see how many of those I use, and sweet rocket, and that is enough. Right, as is always the way, I have laid out the containers I need to fill. It's only 10, jar, 10 jam jar posies, a bride, three bridesmaids and seven buttonholes and a spare bucket. Now this may look very, very simple as a bridal scheme, but it's my idea of heaven on earth because it is simple. It's a repeating pattern. And it, it feels very bog standard. However, when you look at the quality of the material available and you think how much fun I can have making a jam jar posy isn't just a jam jar posy. A jam jar posy is simply a jam jar is, is sorry, I've got my bin here. Um, I'll move you back here. A jam jar can be anything you want. It's like a really good blank canvas. And when you look at the material that I have, with which to fill the jam jars, you see that I'm not necessarily making something just plain simple. I'm going to make art. <laughs> Blowing my own trumpet a bit. But I intend the jam jar posies to be artistically breathtaking. I, I intend them to be something people see them and literally kind of go, oh, they are fabulous. Uh, I don't want them to use words like clever or um, I just, or simple, or I just want people to look at them and go, oh, be wowed by them. And by having 10 really simple jars to fill, I can then, because the, I suppose what I'm saying is the, the, the boundaries around which, beyond which I cannot go are tight. And so th therefore the creativity must be extraordinary. And that's what I really like to do. <laughs> so it may seem like a really simple wedding scheme, but actually 
it's for me it's really really fun uh so i'm gonna make the bride's bouquet first i do wedding flowers prep workshops bridal bridal design workshops um cutting and conditioning workshops all of which are available to download online so i'm not going to show you step by step how i make the bride's bouquet uh, but i'll show you as i've made them what i get and i will take you through the jam jar posies because i think they're so exciting in their simplicity now i've made the bride and here she is she is quite for me this is quite a big bride's bouquet and the brief was wild spring sweet peas and we have the fir very first sweet peas and the brief kind of swung back between white <laughs> sweet peas rich purples because as i was posting the photographs of the work of the flowers i have in the garden uh, the client it, it, uh, said oh, i love those i love those i love those so actually what it's ended up being is quite a rich colored bouquet what I think, if I had offered my client rust-coloured foliage, they probably would have turned it down. But you can see how the dark physocarpus leaf gives a base for everything else to shine against. And there's a little bit of white, but it's not a very white bouquet. Um, I always have this thing that you, you want to try a bouquet out, hold it up and see how it hangs. And this has a certain amount of weight. It is actually quite heavy. I wouldn't, you know, if you get bigger than this, it weighs a ton. So uh, you don't want to get too big. Anyway, um, there you are. I, I love, I love the rust because it stops the pink being too pink. Pink can be very blue. You've got to paint with flowers a little bit because then you then you you end up with a palette which is really really attractive and this is why i love having a small wedding to do because then i can paint i've got time to think about it and you definitely get really good work <laughs> from me anyway and there we have three little jam, little um bridesmaids posies all set now i'm going to make the buttonholes so the buttonholes are done, the bridesmaids are done, the bride is done. And I now have all this material to make 10 jam jar posies. And I'm not going to use all of it, I have overcut. But it is fun to have a lot to play with. Right, so look, the jam jar is relatively small and the neck is narrow. And one might consider that the posy within it would not fill very much space. But no. <laughs> Let us make a fat jam jar posy. And that doesn't mean that the material is going to be tightly jammed together. I'm going to allow it to be very, very widely reaching by cutting the stems quite short so that they, if I keep the stems long, it'll force the material to stand upright. If I, the shorter I cut the legs of the the stems the further out the stems will be able to reach because you can see they won't have to if, if you know if they're reaching down they have to the flowers have to stand upright but if they can go sideways like this they can reach out further so that's my number one thing and the other thing is i'm going to use quite wide reaching material um so i'm going to put you on a time lapse thing and you'll see when I've done it. So it's nearly done. I'm, I've got plenty of material, so I'm going to add a bit, but um, you can see how small jar large table center you're welcome so there it is that is a good fat table center plenty big enough to fit the fill the space but 
it's not going to, because of the amount of space it's taking on the table, tiny little jar, there will be plenty of room for all the salts and peppers and bottles of water and bottles of wine and candles and baskets of bread and sharing platters and all the other stuff that needs to go on the table. So it's a nice big posy and I'm cutting it short. Being careful not to cut my little finger off. I cut it really short because then there will be room for the stems to splay out a little bit in the jar. And there you have a table center, right? I'm going to do another nine. Right, it's uh, 7.30 in the morning the next day, good morning. Um, and they've all been sitting here overnight having a nice drink. And I'm going to, it's time to pack them up. I thought we'd like to see how I pack things up. They're going to be collected by my lovely client. Um, before I do anything else, I'm just going to check the water levels on all my posies because they drink. It's quite warm, the weather. It's May bank holiday weekend and the forecast is 23 degrees, which doesn't sound much. That's Celsius. Um, but they're very thirsty, these spring flowers, so they will need topping up particularly the buttonholes in their little individual files of water, they can easily drink up. So we'll just fill all of those up. Um, and then I'm going to cut the ribbons. I'm not going to tie the ribbons because the wedding is tomorrow. Uh, so my client can tie the ribbons. I don't like fancy pants, you know, complicated ribbon binding of bouquets. So I will simply give my client long stretches of beautiful ribbon and they can tie them in a bow. It's, <laughs> I'm keen on keeping things simple in my life and in the lives of my clients too. Um, I'll just show you my the posies. They have come up a treat. And if you imagine this is on, these are going to be on round tables, uh, which will seat eight or 10 people. And you can see that that's plenty big enough. And uh, this particular client, when I first started talking to them about their wedding, their daughter's wedding, in the winter, um, and she's a lovely lady, and she said, but my daughter's not convinced that a jam jar is big enough to fill the space in, and it's quite a grand country house they're being married in, and she was concerned that a jam jar would not be smart enough for the grand country house. But I hope you'll agree <laughs> that a jam jar is indeed smart enough for a grand country house. And in fact, the one thing that does brilliantly in a grand country house is something as simple and workaday and straightforward as a jam jar. It's an honest, straightforward thing because grand country houses in the olden days, not now necessarily, but the olden days, they were places where a large community, community of people lived, working hard to make the place lo a lovely place to live. And yes, okay, if you were the scullery maid, you weren't possibly having quite such a nice time as the lady of the manor. But nevertheless, it was a sort of community activity to make loveliness. And I'd say that this works very well. I always like to make bouquets and posies that look like miniature herbaceous borders. Objective achieved. Did I say it myself? Anyway, I do hope they like us. I think that this clip, I've sounded very smug and, and um, self-confident. But it's possible that, this, you know, this is, this is really where my skill set is very happy. Um, anyway, uh, right, I'm going to pack up. I'll show you when I've done it. Enough chat. First, I've got to sweep the table. 
I made so much mess doing this job. And uh, unless I've got a clear space, how can I box up, box up the flowers? I should have tidied up last evening, but there was a curry karaoke night at the pub. <laughs> and I couldn't resist a trip out with Fabrizio. So this, these are the boxes that the peonies arrived in from Cornwall. So I'm going to reuse them to put the posies in. And while I'm, while I'm topping up the water of the jam jars, I'm just giving the jars a rinse out and fresh water. And I'm just taking a millimetre or two off the stems of the posies so that they stay fresh. It is the way to keep flowers fresh is to give them fresh water in a clean vase and keep their stems snipped. You do not, in my considerable experience, need flower food, bleach or anything like that. And there are the posies boxed up and all ready for delivery in their recycled box. And there we are, all set, all done, all ready to go. Bucket of spares um, in case or for extras. And uh, there you have a dinky little country wedding. But small is very beautiful. You don't have to have weight and stuff of flat, you know, you don't have to have everything. A wedding is no more lovely for a great weight of flowers. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Keep it lighter, keep it fresher, keep it beautiful. And um, yes, I don't know, a lot of weight is demonstrating what? A lot of light and beauty is demonstrating It's softer. Anyway, that's what I think. What do I know? I hope you've enjoyed the clip. I'll see you soon. Bye.